You ready? Yes. <sighs> Hello, everybody. It's Hannah Kathleen here, and welcome back to the Stimulus Summit Think Start Scale. I am back with you as host today with my good friend and collaborator, Alex Stern. So, thank you for being with us, Alex. Uh, thanks for having me. We are so excited for this interview with the wonderful Sebastian Amieva. Sebastian is a serial entrepreneur originally from Patagonia in Argentina, and he has extensive experience, but the most exciting and intriguing element of what he does is he helps entrepreneurs and business owners scale their businesses via business acquisitions. So buying, selling companies is his forte, and he's here with us to share so much value and more of his story with the audience today. So thank you so much for being with us, Sebastian. We're so excited to have you. Thank you very much, Hannah, for having me. Thank you, Alex. I, I feel honored to stay with you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the invitation. Thank you. And the introduction. Thank you, Anna. Of course, it's our pleasure to have you. So, I mean, we've got so much that we want to get into in this interview, but one thing that would be amazing is if you could share a little bit about how you initially took the first steps into becoming an entrepreneur, because I know you're passionate as well about the concept of diversifying and, you know, pursuing traditional education as a young person, but also um, pursuing entrepreneurial endeavors. So I'd love if you could share a little bit about how it all started. Yeah, of course. So as um, as any entrepreneur, all what we want is freedom, right? We want freedom. We want to be our, our own boss. We want to lead. We want to, you know, to create new companies. We want to free up our life. So I was wondering since very my early stage how to create wealth, how to create passive income, how to create freedom. And the ways I found was um, buying businesses, of course, creating wealth by business acquisition and also uh, outsourcing. So. I put focus on identifying good companies in the in the beginning and trying to use uh, a technique which is called LBO, leverage buyout, where you using the asset against the a business loan so you can take over businesses without using your own capital. So I started to to investigate and to to learn about this, and I got a mentor 11 years ago, 10 years ago, who was an M&A lawyer, and he teach me about how to buy and sell businesses using this kind of asset-based lenders, using lenders money as a down payment, and then you can do the, the fair payments and structure a deal in a way that you are not using your money. So as an entrepreneur, say, wow, you can buy a business without using your money. Sounds a bit... Uh, <laughs> Uh, not really true, right? So I said I started to investigate, and I realized that the rich people they never use their own money. For for them, it's easier to use and cheaper to use the lenders' money than their their own capital, right? So I realized that I could do that. So I started buying my first business. You know, when I was 24 years old, I bought a transportation company, 200 employees, and then I I think you know that story. And then. <laughs> <laughs> After six months, of course, the company went bankrupt because I didn't know what I was doing. Managing being a CEO and a buyer at the same time is very tricky. So it's better to position <laughs> yourself. Or either you want to be a CEO or you want to be a business buyer. You need to separate, you know, what you want to achieve. And then, yeah, this is how all started. So then after after that the first acquisition, I decided to to go bigger, to take a risk and go into London to the UK. I realized London is uh, the center of the world, if you want to call it. So uh, as I'm Italian, also I have double nationality. I, I could live in, in the UK without any issue. So I moved to the to London six years ago, and I set up my family office with a partner. You know, I used to have a partner there. We set up a family office with my office, fancy office in the Gherkin, you know. I realized <laughs> now I, I, I don't need an office anymore because I, I got my my reputation up, if you want to call it. But uh, yeah, I used to come to my office in the beginning, you know, trying to set up my family office. And I bought uh, a few companies in Europe. I bought a football club in Spain, not Barcelona, but I bought uh, a, third division, <laughs> a, a third division football club. So they flew from uh, from Cantabria, from the north of Spain. They flew to, to my office and they requested me if, if I could help them to restructure the football club. And of course, I am from Argentina. I liked a little bit football. I say yes, why not? So I became a 51% shareholder of that that club. It's called a Rayo Cantabria Football Club. It's the third division. So I start helping them with the sponsors. And of course, you know, football club is good for for passion, but not really for business, right? So I was I was ending putting up money from out out of my pocket to pay the salaries of the players. 
I realized, yeah, football club is good, but it's not really, it's good for, for exposure. So after I bought that club, a lot of opportunities came to my way because I was on the radio in Spain doing a few conferences. When you are a, a football club owner, you get a lot of exposure. So <laughs> I got a lot of deals after that. And then um, this was my, my first deal in, in, in Europe. And then um, I received a call from a Brazilian business owner. Uh, he flew to London to meet me, and uh, I bought uh, the biggest LED factory in Brazil, 750 employees, you know, 22 million euros assets with my partner. So, yeah, we, we flew. I took my partner. He's a British guy from, from Scotland. I took him to South, to South America, to Brazil. So he got very excited about the culture and the opportunities you have in Latin America. Because uh, sometimes uh, people in in, uh, in the British people are, are worried about doing business abroad, like in Latin America. But I believe you have so much opportunities out there because people is uh, mm -hmm. you have more credibility. You, you came from the first world, and the the funding solution from the UK are very useful for the for the Latin American companies. So I set up a PLC company as a holding company in the UK. And then the, the Brazilian LED factory became a subsidiary. We start raising funds in the UK using this P PLC company as a SPV, as a special purpose vehicle. And then, yeah, we restructured the business in one year and a half, approx. And then I started making some, some good money, good profit with my partner. And then we, we sold it to, we sold it to an, a Chinese supplier. So we, we've been bought by Chinese supplier. This was a good deal. Um, yes, this was my third one, and then I, I started my BPO company, my business process outsourcing, which is TaskQ. It's kind of a freelancer agency. We provide social media marketing services. So I have 24 employees in Latin America, all these Colombia, Venezuela, Argentina countries. And at the same time, people were approaching me on, on Facebook, you know, if I could teach them how to buy and sell businesses, right? So I was thinking about a name to call it, and I called the, the Facebook group Buying Business for a Living because people always ask me, Sebastian, what do you do for a living? Because I don't understand. You are all, <laughs> all, all, all over the place, different countries, taking <laughs> pictures. I said, well, I just buy business for a living. I, I don't know what to, how to call it, right? I try to find a good opportunity, one business per year, and you can you know make a, a good living, right? So it's all about finding the... A good deal that makes sense with asset heavy deal i mean it's because for example right now with the COVID or with all the this the problematic situation it's good to buy businesses with asset heavy that means having a real estate inside or having expensive equipment or machinery so you can use it as a collateral to, to raise funds let's say you want to mm -hmm. buy a, a 1 million or 10 million pounds company and it's have uh, the real estate you have machinery equipment and you can use it, you can use this asset, the company target asset as a collateral to raise funds using the asset-based lender in the UK, for example, or using the invoice lender. You have so many kind of lenders in the UK, but uh, the asset-based lender and invoice lenders are very, very helpful for you to use it for the down payment, right? So the down payment, you normally need between 20 and 30% minimum. And the rest, 70% or 80%, you can do a deferred payment. So you can pay in a balloon of five years. So this, this was what I was teaching when people approached me, Sebastian, what do you do for a living? So I created this uh, coaching or mentoring program, you know, uh, teaching people how to buy and sell businesses. Because I realized it's like a 10, 12 people in the world teaching this topic uh, from Dan Peña and other guys, you know. But I realized they are not really, they are selling like an info product. It's not, and I realized people, if they want to buy a business, like I did 11 years ago, you need a support from a human, not just a motivational videos. You just need, you need somebody who walk you through the entire process. So I, I developed a 12 month program where, where I partner with people. It's not just a coaching program. I get shares for the deal and also I charge a fee, an entry fee. So we, we help people to, to identify good opportunities, to set up a company, a website, a pitch deck, everything you need to become a deal maker, right? So, yeah, I, I'm sharing my experience through this this uh, coaching program or mentoring program, if you want to call it. I call it partnership program, right? So, but this is less known. And then, uh, yeah, I've been making a lot of friends in Australia, UK, the US, and all over Europe. People contact me. 
they want to partner with me. So I, I get you know, a lot of exposure with this topic, buying a business for a living. Because of course, if you want to, if you want to buy a business, it's a good way to to create the wealth, right? But uh, a lot of people get wrong, and they buy a business. They want to be the CEO because the ego stuff. They want to be the CEO. They want to be the president. They want to do everything at the same time, and they they are doing the same mistake I did 11 years ago. Ago, so I recommend to people to buy the business, delegate the management, and get dividends. This is the formula: <laughs> buy the business, delegate the management. <laughs> Don't complicate much. So they need to become the people who is working with me must to become good at buying a business. This is you need to position yourself as an investor. You need to check out the balance sheet of the company. We do a pre-evaluation of the company, and then we make an offer, a letter of intent. We send the MP SPA. And then finish. You need to move on to the next deal. Don't complicate your life trying to become the CEO, you know, the director. So yeah, this is my experience. You know, with uh, people buy a job, they don't buy a company. They want to buy a job because they have the employee mentality, right? So, so they can, they can, you know, change it. So don't buy a job. Buy a buy a business. Don't buy a job. This is my advice to people starting on this uh, business acquisition career, right? So yeah, yes. don't yeah. buy a job. Don't buy a job. And I, I love the strategy and uh, div dividends are that gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, dividend is the is the way, and it's, it's it's more passive, you know, passive passive incomes. I believe everybody want to free up your lives. Some people want to want to stay busy all the time because maybe they have some. I believe if I want to stay busy all the time, it's like a, I have some psychology issues, you know, right? So it's good to be busy, but busy in a productive way, not busy just for. Stay busy. Uh, maybe. So I, I I want to stay busy with my family, with friends, with you know enjoy new cultures. This is a good good busy, you know. And of course, learning new strategies to keep freeing up my life. And I want to all all all, all about my life is how I can I free up my agenda this week. How can I make more with less? You know, all about leverage. I'm thinking all the time leverage. I want to leverage myself. You know, it's a uh, because at the end of the day, what you want is having a good life, enjoying with friends, family, uh, and I it, you know, and then yeah. exploring new cultures. Of course, everybody have different goals, you know. I'm not, not here to say what you need to do. I'm just telling my, my story, simple story yeah. from a Patagonia guy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, it's, yeah. it's, great. it's a great story. And uh, I'm, uh, just uh, uh, passive income and le leveraging uh, through dividends is key. Um, I'm just curious when you're when you're assessing a business, you know, obviously the assets are, you know, how you're how you can, uh, you know, measure against the the uh, you know the debt that you take in to do so. But but what are what are a couple of other things you look for in the business that you know would be you'd consider strategic or one that you'd want to buy uh, on top of the the assets? Yeah, so uh, buying a business maybe for me is the easiest part. Buying a business, I believe, before buying you need to have an strategy. Because you are taking a lot of debt to buy a business. So you must have a strategy about how I, I'm going to perform sales, how I'm going to increase the profitability of this deal. Because if you don't increase the sales, if you don't increase the profit, you are not be able to, to take some money out of the business. So you, you want to just buy the business to pay out of the debt. So you need to have a strategy before buying. And also, you know, uh, an strategy can be a consolidation model, like an agglomeration model, buying five companies together, you know, or or do a partnership or joint venture with another similar company. You know? So having a strategy before is important, I believe. And another thing, of course, I'm checking, you know, the marker. I always get a market report. Let's say when I start buying a business with a new person who is, came into my program, we define our investment criteria. Let's say the location, industry, and asking price. So we say two industries, let's say healthcare and transportation, and we say asking price one to 10 million and location UK. So you, we are focused on one industry and we start to gather information about the industry. What is going on with the industry? Because it gives you also credibility in stem of uh, negotiation. So when you meet the seller, you you already have who are the which which are the top 10 players in that industry, you know, how is performing the industry. You need to be credible on, on the negotiation table with the seller. It's because of course they are they don't want to sell the the business to you because you got the money they will like to feel understood uh, and of course they say okay this guy know about the industry he know the top 10 players he know about you know how difficult it is to start this, this kind of business so also it's empathy 
is, is important. So I believe checking the asset, uh, going to your question is checking the, must be asset heavy, you know? So you can use it as a collateral like machinery, equipment, or real estate. And, and also you need to check out the discretionary salary owner. So how much money is taking the owner out of the business? It, because sometimes, uh, most of the time, the business owners, we use in our business to pay our lifestyle. Of course, I use in my business to pay my lifestyle, my hotel, my trips, my everything, my courses. But uh, so I, I'm, I'm checking out very carefully this kind of expenses, right? So when I have the, the second meeting, not the first one, I ask them, how much are you taking out of the business? Because some, some of them, they pay in the children's schools, they have, you know, the cars, they charge everything to the business. So that cost are going to be my my money. You know, if I buy the business, I'm going to be able to use that money for for the debt repayment or for taking out for my lifestyle, right? So I, I check in out that numbers on the balance sheet. And of, and of course, sometimes it's very sensitive topic to talk with the with the seller on the first meeting. But on the second meeting, you can ask this kind of question because at the end of the day, it's going to be your business. So you're going to be able to use that cash to do debt repayment or to pay your lifestyle. Right. Yeah. This is uh, great advice. Yeah. So yeah. good. And I think one thing that we've we've talked about previously is the importance of obviously not buying a job. Buying <laughs> and a in job. order to do that, you need to make sure that you put the right people into the organization in order to scale it so that you can obviously right. take a step back. And that's one thing that I know so many entrepreneurs struggle with is finding or identifying the right people. So what would be a piece of advice that you could give individuals who are at the scale point in growing their businesses when it comes to finding the right talent yeah correct so what what i do what i do in my, in my case after i define the investment criteria you know my investment criteria the location the industry and the asking price i just get two headhunters you know in my in my industry let's say i'm buying transportation companies i'm gonna find on linkedin or any social media or any agency two headhunters that are are hunting on um, on my industry, so they will they will filter for me two or three CEOs who were running a business in the same industry and in the same company size. Let's say one to fifty employees and making ten ten million dollars revenue. So they hiring for me, you know, two or three CEOs, you know, and then I'm gonna interview them for the for the takeover. So when when they start working, you know, I just interview them and then. I check in. I check out their background, and I then decided. You know, I'm gonna. I'm ready for for the takeover with two or three CEOs potentially. So the advice is hiring a headhunter, or you can do it by yourself. If you want to pay pay finder fees, you know, you just can do it by yourself using Sales Navigator, the sales tool of LinkedIn. You know, and hiring a, you know, three three or four uh, CEOs. Another mm -hmm. advice is having a non-executive director. Normally. When you start buying a business, the, the seller or the broker will ask you, what is your background? And maybe you are very young, like I was 10 years ago, and people, I'm not young anymore, sorry, but I <laughs> like, uh, so they, they will ask you, what is your background? And, and maybe you're too young. So what you can do in that case to bring credibility to the table is to, to, to invite uh, two or three non-executive director, you know, uh, you know, some people who is retired in the industry. So you put them on the board, on the pitch deck, and that is gonna give you, you know, the the gray hair that you need on on your board. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, because people are still thinking that like is, that. The people yeah. can't believe at twenty years old buy a twenty million dollar company with no money down. So sometimes you need to, you know, make it up. You know, building right. a solid profile and then <laughs> uh, bringing non-executive director. You can give equity to them. You can give equity less than four percent of each deal, or you can pay a success fee. Right after deal completion, you can mm -hmm. give something from the company. And so the company pay all the expenses after you buy, or you can give equity, less than 4% is I recommend. And that way is, uh, yeah, is what I do for for bringing credibility to the deal. And of course, to helping me with, to picking the right CEO, because the non-executive director, they know the CEOs, you know, for the for the sure. last jobs. So this these two, non-executive director and headhunters. I, would I think it's it's great to have that though reminder because I think obviously we've talked about life by design and and you know freeing up your schedule how can you leverage your time more effectively and I think one thing that we all need the reminder of is how can you delegate more successfully so I think it's a yeah. great piece of advice and obviously boosting credibility. 
Yeah, delegation is key. It's key on, on almost every business. But of course, uh, mastering the art of delegation is not easy. You know, it's a, I've been trying to read a few books, but I believe you learn more by doing, you know, and also it's believing more in, on your gut. You know, when I'm interviewing people to become the CEO, I try to, you know, follow in my gut, you know, <laughs> everybody have, have this kind of, <laughs> so. That, that's great. Yeah. And, uh, I'm curious, I'm curious <laughs> on, the, on your process, because um, um, you're, you're in several different industries and, and uh, how long does it typically take you when you uh, to sort of uh, find and source and, and do the deal, and then how long do you typically stay in? Uh, you know, for you, you talked about, you know, kind of paying. You know, the ass, the assets, and uh, um, we'll be paying back. You know, the debt. But but do you have sort of a timeline? You usually want to stay within the deal, you know, for a certain amount of time. So getting in, and then how long you stay? Yeah. So you, I recommend to stay until you do all the debt repayment, right? So you're gonna have a free debt business, and you can sell it for the for the full asking price, right? So you bought a business for one million pounds, but you took one million dollars, one million pounds debt to do the repayment, or you did seller finance over a three years period. So it's better to wait the three years period. You take money out as a you know cash cow business. You take for your expenses, and after three years, when you pay back the seller finance part and the debt repayments, you have a free debt business. So you can sell it for the asking price. And you you can see the the big money at the end, uh, at the end of three years or four years. It depends on the negotiation. So it's a uh, it's long term, right? It's long term, and of course uh, you need to keep the business alive for three years. And you know, um, for that it's very important to have a good non-executive director, a good board, or a good CEO to run the business for you. But of course, if you you can sell it uh, at the middle. Let's say you 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 pay fifty one percent of the business, you can sell fifty one percent. You know the majority to an to a private equity firm or to a family office, so you can stay uh, shorter, like say one year, one year and a half. You can sell a participation, not the entire process. So in terms of myself staying, I never stay on the business. Normally, the the seller stayed for a period of soft landing period. So like he's coaching you about the business during three three months paid. You know, we pay to the to the seller to stay three months to to teach the new CEO. You know. What is going on? Sometimes we keep the current CEO. Another option can be keeping the, uh, the if, if the CEO is doing well, why why you wanna replace it? You know, don't don't change things. It's working. You know, so uh, we can keep it, and of course we can uh, we can do some uh, supervision. So the new CEO can uh, give us uh, weekly rep reports, monthly reports, and we can you know tracking everything what what they're doing. Right. So yeah, this is what this is my answer. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Amazing. So good. I mean, there's yeah. there's so many questions Money, that you yeah. could ask. But what do you think um, when it comes to like if you do stay in, for example, or you're heavily involved and you don't necessarily sell? What do you think is a pivotal point of scaling a business? Scaling a business. Well, if you're a business, if you're a business owner and you want to scale. Up, you have uh, different options on the market. You can pay marketing, you can hire a coach, a mentor, you can do a lot of things. My thing, uh, my advice is uh, is growing by a business acquisition. Why? Because I believe it's smarter and faster to, to buy your competitors out or to buy somebody who is into the, your chain mm -hmm. that, uh, that invest in the marketing, right? Of, co of course, investing in marketing is good, but you're going to grow your own company slowly year by year. But Grabbing all your competitors or grabbing more companies in your industry or doing an agglomeration model is, uh, I think, is more clever because you already have an asset, which is your business. And you can use your your business as a corporate guarantee or as a, as a collateral. And you're using also the company target assets to buy business. So you're going to need less money. If you're a business owner, you're going to need less money to buy business. So it's going to be easier for you to keep growing by a business acquisition. and Sometimes you can do both. I'm not saying follow my advice, only grow by business acquisition. <laughs> you can grow by marketing a little bit and also grabbing, you know, one business per year because it takes time to buy a business, you know, doing the due diligence, doing the deal hunting, trying to identify the good opportunities. You know, you're also going to spend time and some money on consulting fee for the legal due diligence, accountant due diligence. Mm -hmm. So I believe buying one, two companies per year while you're investing in marketing is the, way, the best way to scale, you know, to scale up 
and to, to grow. I love that though. Yeah. Buy your competitors. I think that's a Buy huge, a huge golden nugget. Yeah. Buy your competitors. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the best. The best. Instead to instead of fighting <laughs> with marketing campaigns, instead of right. taking, yeah. take, Taking all the followers away <laughs> instead of doing all, this, doing all of this, just buy the, your competitors. You know? Associate with a private equity firm. Associate with a family office. Do joint ventures with them. They they could help you because you can bring money to the down payment from the family office, from the private equity firms, or from the lenders. Right? These three options. Or you have another programs. You know, the SBA, for example, in the US. But in the UK, you can bring money with these three sources. So why? Why you don't convince family office and private equity firms to join venture with you to, to grab in, to buy out your competitors? I think this is a very smart way to, to you know, to delete them and to you keep going, keep, keep going. <laughs> to delete them. I love that. Yeah, and, 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 and that, <laughs> uh, oftentimes it's a function of how big is the market. And so, so yeah. if you have three competitors and you have 70 or 80% of the market, you know, it just makes more sense that you take them out and you become one. Then, yeah. then fighting fighting for that twenty percent through all of you doing spending marketing dollars trying to get the, the remaining you know market share. So so right. so so it does it makes total sense. Uh, and in some some cases, if you you know you outpace them, you know sometimes they come they come calling and like, hey, you want to you want to take us out? Yeah. Um, so Great. If you do a good job. Oftentimes they're they're going to knock on the door as opposed to you having to go find them. So. Correct. Yeah. So I believe, yeah, this is a good, uh, good strategy. Just it's all about preparation. You know, how you prepare to take over your competitors. You know, which kind of resources you have at the moment. You have your own company. You have yourself, but you need funding solution, right? Can be a lender. Can be a joint venture with family office and private equity firms investing in your, in your, in your criteria. And of course, each industry dif is different. For example, marketing, if you want to buy all the marketing agencies out there, you have, I don't know how many thousand of agencies in, in the UK. It's difficult to, to do that. So, you know, uh, it depends on the industry. If it's a transportation, maybe you can take a big market share, you know. But marketing is a difficult industry because uh, um, you, you don't have much assets. The only asset you have is the owner and the, <laughs> and the contract. The service right. contract, you know, there's no much, no much asset to leverage, right? Only the contract. But of course, if you have a contract with the government, with the, with the UK government, it's a solid contract. You can use it as a collateral to, to raise money because, you know, they are gonna pay you. You know, you, they, you know, it's a solid client. So, but if you have a with simple entrepreneurs, it's not le leverageable. You, know? you can leverage. Yeah. So for someone getting started in business acquisitions, yeah. are, is there like a top three industry list that you would recommend looking at or, you know, one or two industries that you would say focus here because they're yeah, the yeah. so, so better I, option? I, yeah, yeah. I, I recommend asset heavy business. Asset heavy means uh, companies, you know, manufacturing with expensive equipment, mm -hmm. expensive machinery. Uh, you can do an appraisal and you can use that asset as a collateral. Some uh, businesses that are using real estate also because you can use it as a collateral. And of course, you know, if it's a service company like a marketing, if it depend, it depends the contract you have. If you have a solid contract with solid companies, you know, uh, listed company, for example, it's easy to get funding solution. It's all about getting funding solution because uh, people, people start buying businesses and they, they start for the step nine, I call it deal hunting. They start finding deals to buy, but they don't have any funding solutions. So when they find a good deal, they say, okay, now how to proceed? I sign the NDA, I place an offer, a letter of intent, but then I don't have funding. So I say, right, you need to start, first of all, set up a website, a pitch deck, you know, build your deal team, bring your non-executive director, get three lenders in place, three family office, five private equity firm in place, and then go and try to find a deal, right? So people is doing the opposite, and I have seen the same mistake every time. They contact me, Sebastian, I found this company, 10 million for, for sale, but I say, okay, so do you have a website, a pitch deck, which is your team? Do you have funding solution? They have nothing, so it's a, they are going to fail. It's very... It's not easy uh, to start it from the scratch this business. So I recommend to have everything in place. The funding solution is very important, right? So if you don't have lenders, if you don't have the the, the collaterals, you know, it's, it's very difficult to buy a business, you know, without using your, your own capital, right? So 
Yeah. yeah. When you when you look at companies today and you ask them, you know, what you know, looking out three years, five years, what are you looking for? A lot of them say, well, I, I want to be acquired. I want to be, yeah. Everybody wants to be acquired because they, they see the big money. Huh? They see the right. big money and the exit. But right. of course, uh, even the big private equity firms, they are using as much leverage as they can. You know? They doing they doing they doing LBO strategies, leverage buyouts. They don't know they are not putting their own money. So everybody wants to be acquired, but of course you need to prepare your business for exit. If I am I'm preparing my business for exit, so it's like a, you need to have you need to tidy up your business, tidy up your balance sheet, your tax return, everything. So you you when a private equity want to do a due division on you, on your business, you are f fully prepared for a, for an exit. So it's good to hire an M&A expert, a merchant acquisition expert, to help you out preparing your business for sale. And of course, when I say preparing, it's all about framing, framing, like legal framing, like doing a, a license of your product or, or trademark, or, you know, protecting your, your business to, to give a, to give more asset, like trademark is a good asset. For example, I put it on on the valuation sometimes trademark or creating a license of your brand, right? Or um, intellectual you know. property or yeah, property. Yeah, it's not a patent, patents or anything. Patent, or, yeah. patent is good. Um, yeah, it's all about. Yeah. I, right now, I'm, I believe uh, good companies to buy are manufacturing. You know, manufacturing having expensive equipment or transportation is not is not performing very well. But it's very simple market to to get into because you have the trucks, the assets, the trucks, the office, which normally is the real estate, and then client. And and also right now with COVID, you know, the transportation is transporting all the goods to everybody, the deliveries, and Amazon is buying. Amazon is buying a lot of warehouses, warehouses. So I believe transportation would be good. Now it's, it's performing not good, but I believe buying a warehousing business is good, and buying uh, buying transportation can be good. They're they're cheap at the moment, and it's easy to to get funding. You know, again, funding is uh, always the the issue of funding entrepreneurs. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And, uh, and do you? Uh, um, I mean. Uh, uh, having done this before, you've got your sort of your team. You know, you talk of all the areas where you have a team that you're sort of pulling in and bringing into the fold. Um, on the on the uh, you know the lending side, you know what what are you seeing with? Are there any trends or any things that are changing on the lending side that that you know folks should should be aware of? Yeah. So right now, right now the lending industry is is collapsed. You know, so overwhelmed with so many applications. You know, people is getting. Is uh, is asking for business loans because companies are failing most of most of them. So the lenders are very busy. So they will prefer to to lend you money if you have a a tidy up business and if you have a minimum five years history and and minimum you know a solid asset asset heavy deals. You know, so they don't want to take much risk because they have so many clients right now. So your business must be in order, must be tidy up. So, for example, right now, right now, the a deal that I'm, I'm closing is uh, I'm buying a plastic pipe factory in Izmir, is um, Turkey. In Turkey, you know, my my mentee, he's from he's from uh, UK, you know, Mark, my mentee, and then we, we he found a deal in in Izmir, is uh, by the beach in in Turkey. So we we buying a 18 million uh, factory plastic pipe, you know, plastic pipe. So I I would love to go there to sign the SBA to. The share purchase agreement, but I am locked down here. I can't move much. So yeah, this this business, for example, they the Turkish people want to exit. They have a suddenly they have a brain issue. The the, the owner is very ill, so he's very motivated for for an exit. And what we do in, the, in that case, we're gonna set up a holding company in the UK. We are gonna transfer the shares from the Turkish company. So we now we are playing a safe territory with plenty of funding solutions. And of course, we need to hire a cross-border team. This is more complex, but this is the kind of deal I like. Setting up the holding company in the UK, which is a first world economy, you have so many funding solutions, and I kind of understand more the the, the rules. So I I get out of Turkey because I don't understand the rules there. So I transfer the shares to the UK, to a, my safe place, and then I set up the office, I set up everything. So we we closing this deal. They have the 4 million uh, USD cash in the bank account so we can use that cash to to bring more cash and then uh, we pay in uh, three years and a half we made an agreement to pay in three years and a half 
each cap also have six million dollar in debt, you know. So we assuming the debt. Another way of buying a business without using your own money is uh, is called debt assumption. So you assume the debt. Are you saying on the SPA, I'm gonna be responsible for this debt, for example? So this this is this count as a down payment. So this six million debt we using as a down payment, and also the four million cash in the bank account we using as a to raise more capital in the UK. So this is a big deal we're closing right now. And it's, uh, I believe it's uh, plenty of business for sale, you know? The thing is, how you gonna, how you gonna offer a fair exit strategy? For me, it's, it's offering a fair exit strategy. The, the seller must to feel heard, must to feel understood. And also, yeah, it's a negotiation. And uh, you need some credible, you know? You need to understand the industry that you buy. These three points, I think, are, are relevant, are important. Right, that's great. Yeah, for sure. I think um, what you said about a fair exit and making sure that the seller feels understood is a valid point. Yeah. So in terms of the next steps for you, what do you hope unfolds in the next five to 10 years? Do you see yourself just continuing buying and selling businesses or is there anything else in the pipeline that you want to work on personally? Yeah, so, uh, you know, talking about my personal goals, you know, I want to, I want to visit the, uh, more more countries more new countries you know i uh, i i'm uh, approaching 90 countries i visited so far so i want to visit uh, i don't know maybe 120 150 countries so i have uh, you know a couple of years more of traveling and then uh, i would like to i would like to create business owners you know i believe uh, it helped me so i want to help people to to buy to buy businesses and delegate the management so they can become free financially free you know they can so I believe I will. I believe I will improve my my visa acquisition skills, you know, because I'm I'm still learning. Every deal is a new story, is a new industry, is a new world. So I I'm learning which it deal, each deal I'm learning more. So I want to keep learning, keep traveling, and we'll try to inspire others, you know, and also get inspired by uh, uh, successful people, you know, like Richard Branson and other and other ones, you know. I want to I want yeah. to visit I want to visit the island once. I don't know. At some point. Well, we need to talk about that then. I can help yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, so yeah. keep inspiring. Well, you know? Keep inspiring and building new, new business strategies that can uh, free up, you know, your, your your life. You know, yeah. It's all about. I think though so. you're such a good example of life by design and making things happen and being proactive and having a great work ethic, but also yeah. being strategic and making sure that you can have a life too and you can do the things like visiting 120 countries or whatever it may be uh -huh. that somebody uh -huh. wants to accomplish. I know another thing is about, about traveling and working is uh, traveling is, uh, is is amazing, but if you if you start in a business or if you want to grow by business acquisition, I believe you need to stay in one place, you know, for a, for a while, <laughs> because uh, I realized that the last year I did like uh, 16 countries. I've been all over the place and I didn't make much profit, but right now with COVID, I don't know, I triple of four times sales. I make a, a lot because I, mm -hmm. I stay in one place. I have a lot of conference call. I have time to networking online or to do this kind of conference. If I'm traveling, I am on the airport or enjoying in the beach or, you know, it's difficult to, to grow your <laughs> business. So sometimes it's good to stay for six, in six months. I, I just recently did the post in six months. You maybe can do what, what I never did in five years. You know, in, in six months, you can do a lot. So COVID is good, you know, it's good for this kind of entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, people maybe discover their passion during the COVID, you know. I think COVID is a good thing that happened to the humanity. I, I, I'm positive. I'm always positive. I think this is a positive thing. Of course, a lot of people lost their job, but maybe they, they find their passion after this, you know. You never know. So mm -hmm. it will be positive. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you, ra you raise a good point because... With this time, uh, you know, and, and a little extra time that people have, you know, we can focus on the business, not in the business. So if you get out of the day to day, then you're working strategically and you're finding ways to to be more profitable and to and to be to be more leveraged and and so on. So yeah, it's a it's a valid point. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. This uh, this period. Yeah. I can't believe it. I just have so many sales, so many people. I meet new people. I'm able to do this. This kind of summit, you know, it's quite, uh, if not, it's quite difficult Difficult for me. I'm all the time on the go, you know, traveling, what is next, the next destination, the next, 
the next training and trying to, you know, the next deal. So now I think uh, in the beginning I was a bit sad, of course, because I love traveling, but now I realize it's fine, you know. Now I discover more destination to go. <laughs> I have time to to looking for a new <laughs> new destination to go <laughs> and new business to do. You know? yeah. yeah, but I think I think one thing that kind of is tapped into there is how obviously I'm an avid traveler as well. I would consider myself a digital nomad. Domingo travels a lot. Alec is also on the go. And I think it's interesting how, as you said, you, know, you at first you're sad, you miss traveling or whatever it may be. Some people may miss the social element of being at work or in their environment, depending on what it is. But there's always positives that can be found. There's always opportunities that can be sought out if you have that perspective. And that's been one thing for me I've really noticed throughout COVID has been certain contexts that I have, especially entrepreneurs have that mentality of that, you know, we're unbreakable, we'll move forward, we'll make something great, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. do something. And that's, I think, something that's so important to hold on to, regardless of whether or not we're in the middle of a global pandemic. It's something that that mentality, I think, can, can make so many great things happen. Correct, yeah, yeah. So thanks COVID, yeah, thanks COVID. And we need to celebrate, <laughs> no, I'm not saying we need to celebrate, but of course it's good to, good um, momentum to to get to know ourselves more and to get to understand what is going on with the world right now and which new opportunities we, we can create to to support uh, new businesses or to support the entrepreneur you know community yes definitely yeah so well, it's been such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for being a part of the Stimulus Summit. And before we go, what would be your parting words, your parting piece of advice to somebody, whether they're in the idea stage of their journey or they're scaling and taking the next steps? Yes, yeah, so for me, uh, to, to, to summarize, I will say that for me, it's easier to buy a business than starting a new one. When you buy a business, you get established brand, established, you get cash flow from day one, you know, you get everything is done for you. So it's easier for me and smarter to buy a business than starting a new one from scratch. And the probability to fail when you start in a business are too high. So when you buy a business, you buy a proven system. This is, a, and the second one is don't buy a job, <laughs> buy a business, yeah. delegate, delegate the management and keep moving on to the next deal. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Alec, and thank you, Hannah. It was a pleasure to, to speak with you guys. I really enjoyed this kind of a online conference. And yeah, hopefully we can keep in touch and do great things together in the future. Oh, we definitely will. And I think before you go, we have to say mic drop after that last piece of advice. I think that was Please. excellent, excellent advice. Don't buy a job, buy a business, delegate and also um, to the shortcut by buying a business instead of having to go through that process of starting and setting everything up and figuring out your your strategy. And so like, there's so much, so much that I think people wouldn't have even considered with the possibility of buying a business. So thank you so much for being here with us. We really loved having you. You showed so much value and we will make sure guys watching that you will We'll be able to connect with Sebastian and find all of his links. But thank you so much for being with us, Sebastian. We really loved having you. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much, Alex. And let's keep in touch. Thank you very much. You're doing great with this summit. All the best. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank Take you. care, guys. It was wonderful having you here as this interview. This is Sebastian Amieva, business acquisition specialist. And we will see you in the next interview. Take care and have a wonderful evening. Uh -huh.